Hi, and welcome to Kit Guru with me, Alistair. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the Cooler Master SK622 Hybrid Wireless Gaming Keyboard. Before we get started, please make sure to like and subscribe using the buttons below. Coming in at roughly £99, this is a 60% layout wireless mechanical keyboard with a lot of functionality. Inside the box, we've got some instructions for connecting wirelessly, which we'll cover a little bit later. We also have a quick start guide, the keyboard itself, which comes in a nice little bag, and a braided USB-C to USB-A cable. I actually really like this cable. It's got a good braid and a decent length coming in at about 1.8 meters. Finally, we also get a keycap puller for anyone wanting to customize their keyboard or replace keycaps. The model I have here is space gray, but there is also a white variant available. My first impressions of the keyboard were that it's very well weighted and very sturdily built. The keyboard's built from a plastic base with an aluminium plate on top, which gives it quite a lot of rigidity. You won't be seeing any flex from this keyboard unless you happen to type with a hammer. The aluminium plate adds enough weight to avoid the keyboard feeling cheap without it becoming too heavy to take on the move, with the total weight minus any cables coming in at 446 grams or 0.983 pounds. The keycaps are low profile double shop PBT MX style keycaps, which are slightly taller than the previous generation's SK621 keycaps. This low profile design has meant that additional shortcuts accessed through the use of the function button are listed on top of the keycap. With this keyboard supporting a lot of function accessible controls, the caps themselves might feel a little bit cluttered. The SK622 does feature single height feet to angle the keyboard, which also have rubber pads on the bottom and rubber pads at the front of the keyboard, which stops you having to chase your keyboard across the desk while you type. Now, it wouldn't be a gaming keyboard without a healthy dose of RGB, and the SK622 provides on this front with per key backlighting and a light bar around the aluminium plate to add some nice ambient light spill onto your desk. The RGB modes can be changed both through the function buttons and through the Master Plus software, although Cooler Master do boast about the on-the-fly approach with this keyboard, and for good reason. Thanks to all of the additional functions that come mapped to each key as default, you don't actually need the Master Plus software at all, as you can adjust the colour, the brightness, lighting modes, and even record macros all directly from the keyboard itself. Luckily, they do include a quick start guide, which does break down all these functions, so you aren't left guessing. After running this keyboard for a few days, I was really pleased with there being no rattle or wobble on any of the larger keys, with keys like the spacebar being a regular concern when trying out a new keyboard. If anything, the spacebar was actually quite stiff to begin with, but after a few hours it had loosened up and felt just like any of the other keys. It's also nice to point out that the keyboard does support multiple operating systems, with shortcuts for both Windows and Mac OS displayed on the relative keycaps. The inclusion of the arrow keys was also great as it's not something that's common on a 60% layout keyboard. The inclusion of the arrow keys however did cause me a little frustration as it means the right shift key and the delete key are quite small and it's very easy to press either of them when you're trying to use the arrow keys if you're not careful. So when I was typing emails I was actually hitting the up arrow instead of shift, jumping back to the beginning of my sentence and then typing from there. So it's just something to be a little bit aware of. Also, you can use the function button and the right shift button to lock the keyboard, which if you're using the arrow keys a lot, is very easy to do if you're not paying attention. I do really like a lot of the default key mapping for the function keys, but one that stood out as a little odd to me was the use of the JKL keys. Now, I do a lot of video editing, and traditionally the JKL keys are used for play backwards, pause and play forwards, with J being play backwards, K pausing and L playing forward. This is common across pretty much every video editing application, and it even works in some players like YouTube's own player. It feels like Cooler Master came so close to doing this right, but for some reason they've swapped the J and the K key round, so now J is stop and play and K is play backwards. Now, you can change the mapping in the Master Plus software, but you can't change the, the way that the shortcuts are printed on the key themselves, so it's a little bit of a nuisance. Something for them to take on board for the next model. The switches on the SK622 are TTC low profile mechanical switches, and the keyboard is available with either red, blue or brown switches. 
The model I have uses the red switches, which are linear with no tactile bump and quite a low sound profile. With these being low profile switches, the travel distance is quite short, although the actuation point is quite high. If you happen to rest your fingertips on the keys quite heavily like I do in between typing, you might find yourself accidentally pressing keys without meaning to. With all of that in mind, here's the all important sound test. On the side, we have a switch that swaps the keyboard between its wired and wireless modes. In the downwards position, we're in the wired mode, where we use the provided USB-A to USB-C cable to connect to our computer. And in the upwards position, we have the wireless mode. The SK622 uses the Bluetooth 4.0 functionality to connect wirelessly, and this is done really easily. Simply press and hold the function button and any of the three Bluetooth designated keys for five seconds to enter into pairing mode. Once in pairing mode, you can enter the pin code displayed on your computer to pair with the keyboard. It's worth noting that the keyboard doesn't come with a Bluetooth dongle or adapter, so make sure your system natively supports this functionality or you might need to buy a third party adapter. Now, I just skimmed over a really neat feature, and that's that the SK622 supports up to three different devices on Bluetooth at once, hence the designated three Bluetooth keys. This means that you can connect, say, your desktop, laptop, and even your phone or tablet, and switch between all three of them really quickly without having to pair every time. The last thing to mention in terms of connectivity is that there's actually a change in the polling rate depending on the connection you're using, with the wired mode using 1000Hz and the wireless mode using 125Hz. No surprises there then, as if you're looking for the fastest response speed, wired's always the way to go. Although the faster polling rate didn't help my woeful performances in any FPS I played whilst using the keyboard, but that's another matter. The SK622 features two 2000 mAh batteries, which lasted roughly three and a half days without being turned off, with the LEDs on full brightness and heavy usage throughout. So if you're as forgetful as I am, and you don't switch off the wireless mode at the end of each day, you aren't going to have to charge it first thing in the morning. It's also worth noting that if you lower the brightness level of the LED, you will experience longer battery life as well. I've touched on the Master Plus software a little already, but let's have a look at exactly what it offers us. Once we open the application, any connected Cooler Master hardware is automatically detected and you'll be prompted to update the firmware of any device if it's not already running the latest release. By clicking on the keyboard on the left, I now have access to five different menus. Wireless, Lighting, Key Mapping, Macros and Profiles. The wireless menu allows me to set how long it takes for the keyboard to go into sleep mode, the LED brightness, and also allows me to turn the LED ring around the keyboard on or off to conserve battery. Under lighting, we can choose the color of the backlight and switch between the different backlight modes, like rainbow wave, breathing, or reactive punch. There's also a custom mode where you can configure the backlighting in whatever way you want. And there's also support for multi-layer and multi-zone modes, so you can get incredibly granular with the lighting control if you so choose. We then have the key mapping menu, where you can click on a key and use the drop-down menu in the pop-up window to assign everything from letters and numbers to punctuation or media functions on each individual key. The Macros menu allows you to configure and store multiple macros. First, give your macro a name and then use the record button to record the key presses that you want. When you're happy with your recording, you can stop it and then assign that macro to a specific key. Finally, the Profiles menu allows you to have multiple profiles, each with their own specific configuration that you can switch between. I really like this application as it's a single app for all Cooler Master hardware and it makes managing the keyboard really simple and quick.
Overall, I do quite like the SK622, but at the price, it isn't something I'd be looking to use as my daily driver. The oddly sized and positioned shift and delete keys next to the arrow keys prove too much of a change for my typing style to allow me to adapt properly, but this is a completely personal preference. If I was on the market for a 60% mechanical keyboard today, there are alternatives like the Razer Huntsman Mini V3, or if you're happy to sacrifice the wireless functionality, the Corsair K65. Both of these keyboards do lack any arrow keys, but they do have that larger right shift key that I've missed on the 622. However, if you are looking for a small, portable keyboard with an absolute boatload of functionality packed into it, then this is definitely one to consider. That brings us to the end of our look at the SK622. What do you think? Is it going to be your next daily driver? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps the Kit Guru channel out, and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we upload. You can follow us on all social media platforms for the latest updates and donate on Patreon if you're feeling generous. Finally, if you want some sweet Kit Guru merch like this stylish shirt that I'm wearing, you can grab yours from the link below. Thanks for watching.